Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alec Reed. This is my channel Alec Reads and today we are reading Wheelchair Accessible Part 11. Anyway, um, before I do jump in, I do want to say I currently am having issues with my heating system, so I have a personal heater and it can get quite loud every now and again. I tried to read without it, but at the same time I almost froze to death. So I'm really sorry, but I can't <laughs> so you're just gonna have to hear the sound of a heater um because i don't have heat anywhere else and my window's broken at the moment yay landlord anyway um but i also want to say i do now have an instagram it is alec underscore reads spelled like reads as in read a book not ee -E, but ea um anyway um that's posted, so go check that out. Um, I'm probably going to be doing some Q&As on there um, so that you guys can ask questions, I can answer them, or so that I can answer them on here. Um, but yeah, there's so many fun things that I want to do. Um, I'll also be giving updates on everything over there, so I'll give chances for you to vote on what things you want to read next. Um, I'm also going to start reading Nick and Charlie soon. I know I keep saying that, but I actually, like, I'm desperately trying here. I wanted to see if I could get someone else to read with me, because it is a two-person book. So I wanted to know if someone would read with me. So just trying to figure that out. Um, but anyway, let's jump right into the video. Part 11. Shauna seemed to have a gift for making time go by quickly. It had been two months since that day she trampled me in the park. But I was starting to think that when we crashed, she messed with the space-time continuum somehow. I didn't know how it was possible to have learned so much about someone in such a short amount of time, and I had known the guys on my team for years and didn't know half as much but I was pretty sure I knew more about Shauna than I knew about anyone else in the world. For example, I have learned that she liked gummy bears, and she only picked out the red and yellow ones. Her all-time favorite movie was 127 Hours, because the guy has to cut off his arm, and, well, because he's James Franco. And on that note, I have learned... She's also afraid to talk about how attractive celebrity men were in public to literally anyone, including an old lady at the grocery store we met while we were picking up ice cream. Each day brought something new, and there was still so much to learn. Her brain honestly still surprised a me a lot of the time, but only because of the pure wildness that came out of it because she somehow always had something good to say even on bad days when she was feeling tired and she had just had an argument with her parents and her homework was stressful she always found something positive about the situation or something to laugh about my mind didn't work like that it was a mystery to me how hers did but day by day a piece of that mystery would fall away with each conversation over the phone, or movie we watched together, or walk in the park, and parts of my own shell were flaking away too. I was telling Shauna things that I had never told anyone before, and it felt so good. Not intrusive or shameful, it was nice having a friend who actually listened, rather than one who only cared as much as they gained from it. Every day we got closer, and Shauna was proving to be the best friend I ever had, or maybe the only real friend I ever truly had. When you're taking me home to meet your parents, I beg your pardon? I shot her a glance. We were trudging our way through a bustling mall after school one afternoon because Shauna needed to buy a new card for her camera, but we ended up making stops in several shoe stores. Don't ask me why she always needed new shoes, even though she can't even walk. I didn't get it, but I hadn't been able to hang out with her for the past few days, so it was the only time we had to hang out, so so be it. 
I want to meet your mom and dad, she told me simply, looking up at the mannequins in the store window we passed. I felt my neck heat up. Uh, why? Why not? You met mine. But, but it's not like, like you're my girlfriend or something. I forced out a laugh. Shauna's eyes narrowed as she turned her head towards me before I could look away. You're looking a little red all of a sudden, Mark. Pfft. Are you blushing? It's warm in here. Uh-huh. She chuckled, turning a corner, peeking up at me again. Besides, I don't have to be your girlfriend to meet your parents. Like I said, you met mine. It's different. I shook my head. My mom... She... I've only... You've only ever brought girlfriends home? She guessed. Well, I mean... Or only friends with girls' butts you want to touch? Shauna! So you're not going to let me come over to your house because you don't want to touch my butt. I checked over my shoulder, holding back a sigh. I have a nice butt, I guess. I know you can't see it because I'm sitting all the time, but if I want, <laughs> if you want it... She was cut off as I reached down and slapped my hand over her mouth. All she did was look up at me with her innocent eyes, as if she didn't know what she was doing wrong. Do you have to talk so loud all the time? I hissed, grabbing the handles of her chair and pushing her out of the area of people who heard her practically shouting about her butt and me touching it. Oh my gosh, now you're really br blushing. I'm going to kill you. So I can meet your parents? Fine. Shauna crossed her arms and grinned, letting me push her away from the crowns. I didn't know the specifics of what went on at marriage rehabilitation centers, nor did I ever want to know, but whatever they did, it worked. Or helped, at least. My parents had been home for about two weeks, and things had been better. Weird, but better. There haven't been any screaming battles, no tense glares at the dinner table. In fact, my parents have been almost too pleasant. But Reiner was over the moon to have them back, so no matter how weird the new di dynamic shift was, I could deal with it, and I would. Mark, Mark, Sean is here, Ryder called excitedly, running towards the door. I set the last plate on the table, my heart thumping a little harder. I wouldn't call myself an anxious person, but something about this evening made me a bit on edge. Maybe it was because I was having a friend over for the first time in months. Maybe it was because that friend was Shauna. Maybe it was because I was going to be doing the cooking and almost messed up this simple recipe twice. Whatever it was, I was feeling the pressure. Shauna's voice floated in from the entryway, mixing with Ryder's obvious enthusiasm as he greeted her. Hadn't stopped talking about her coming over since I told him two days ago. Come on in. Mark's in the kitchen, trying to impress you by cooking noodles. Ryder laughed, leading Shauna into the kitchen. Is he? She grinned, coming into view. Whoa. Shauna was wearing a dress. Like, a nice dress. It was green and flowy and pretty, and well, I wasn't an expert on dresses by any means, but I would appreciate the look of this one especially on Shauna. And she had done something with her hair and put a bit of makeup on, which was unusual for her, but it looked good. And thinking about Shauna putting a little extra effort just for a dinner with my parents made my chest tighten. And she... Well, she like... She... Wow. I swallowed. It looks like I'm not the only one trying to impress tonight. She pressed her lips together, cheeks turning pink as she glanced down at herself. Okay, I may have been trying a little bit. Oh yeah? I stepped closer and nudged my toe against one of the wheels. So she... So did you have someone particular in mind, or... Well, Ryder, of course. Her eyes twinkled playfully, tugging on my arm. My main man. Ha! He snorted. Told you she liked me more than you. He grinned at Shauna like he, they had some type of inside joke before baking up. I'm going to tell Mom that Shauna's here. 
I tried to watch him leave, but my eyes couldn't stop trailing back to Shauna. She was observing the room, probably taking in the chipped cabinets, paint, and off-green backsplash. Our house wasn't fancy by any means, but there wasn't much to see, so I quickly... busied myself with arranging the already arranged table. Her eyes burned holes into my back. So, you're trying to impress me? She hummed, rolling a little closer. I didn't want to admit that yes, maybe I was a little... So I quickly cleared my throat. You're the one in a dress, Shana. For a rider. Mm-hmm. She laughed, punching my arm. All right, maybe it's a little bit for you. Like, a monocle. Teeny tiny. Just to remind you that I'm a girl, since you never treat me like one anyway, she teased. I'm pretty aware that you're a girl, Shauna. Trust me. Because you're so dang attracted to me. Hi, hi, welcome, welcome. My mom fluttered into the room before I could respond with something witty, or more likely something stupid and embarrassing. My dad was right behind her a moment later, wrapping an arm around her waist, because ever since they got back from marriage rehab, they had been touching each other every possible second. Shauna smiled, lifting her hand in a small wave. Hello. It felt so weird having my two worlds collide in my dingy kitchen, poorly lit kitchen. But I had been letting Shauna more and more into my life, and it felt good to be introducing this area to something felt right about it. Smiling, I glanced over to see my parents' reactions. My dad's forehead was furrowed into a slight frown, but then again, when wasn't it? But my mom was smiling, her perfect host smile, and offering Shauna her hand, her eyes dancing between us. So, are you one of Mark's girlfriends? I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but she had to be impressed that I brought, I would bring someone like Shauna home. I mean, look at her. Mom had to be impressed, right? I was impressed. I mean, not that I was bringing her home or that she was my girlfriend or anything like that. I'm just saying that if she was, which she's not, she would. You, you know what I mean. Oh no, just a friend. Shauna answered with a laugh, peeking over at me. But I am interested in hearing about how many girlfriends you have if I'm only one of them. I wouldn't be too worried, hun, my mom said. He hasn't brought a girl home since Lisa, and I never liked her very much anyway. Or Taylor, or Cassie, or Natalie, or- Mom, okay, I muttered, shaking my head at her. Mark! Shauna giggled. You're a womanizer. Um, food's ready. I gestured at the table, hoping to quickly move on from this topic of my love life. Not really on the top of my list of dinner conversations. You've got the spot at the end, Shana. Thank you. She nodded, sending me a knowing look. She moved to her spot, and Ryder and I sat on either side of her, my parents finding the other two spots. Begin, I encouraged, once everyone was sitting quietly. I scooted my seat closer as I reached for another serving spoon, bumping my knees against Shana's chair under the table. Her eyes met, and we exchanged a small smile before my attention was pulled away as my dad cleared his throat. So, uh, Mark, you didn't tell us your friend was in a wheelchair. My utensils dropped to the table with a clatter. What? You never mentioned it. He had simply pouring himself a glass of water. I didn't think it mattered. No, no, of course it doesn't. It... I just wasn't aware... He refocused on his plate, shrugging. Dad. I huffed, peeking a glance at Shauna, knowing my neck would be red at this point. I wasn't sure if it was more from anger or embarrassment. Shauna was just sitting there like we were talking about the weather. Not that she would show that she was upset if she was, but she shouldn't have to. I'm sorry about him. I told her, 
Her eyes widened. It's okay. It's not. Mark, my mom sighed, trying to play peacemaker. Her typical role in these situations arose. I get that she didn't want there to be an argument, especially not in front of a guest, but Dad didn't have to be such a snob. What is his problem? What difference did it make whether she, whether or not she's in a wheelchair? Whatever, I muttered, picking up the serving spoon I had dropped and grabbed Shauna's plate for her, dishing her up some pasta casserole I had made. Thank you, she said quietly when I passed her plate back. It looks really good. It better be. I slaved over this for hours. Oh, I'm sure you did. Anything for you. I sent her a snappy look, which she returned before breaking out into a grin that instantly made me feel better. I didn't want anything to make her feel unwelcome or uncomfortable here. So, Shauna, my mom began. Yes? She nodded quickly, giving her her full attention. You go to school with Mark? No, Ashley, I go to Jubilee. Mom's eyebrows lifted. Oh, wow. Shauna smiled but ducked her head, nudging the food around her on her plate. My eyes narrowed, wondering what could possibly be causing Shauna to go shy. I hadn't even thought that was possible. What? I pressed, looking between the two. Nothing, nothing. Mom shook her head. It's just impressive. Thank you, Shauna muttered. Why? I asked, completely lost. Ryder looked back at me with a shrug, making sure I knew that he was confused as I was. Thanks for the support, buddy. For getting into Jubilee. Mom explained, tilting her head towards me like it was an obvious information. It's a school for the gifted, didn't you know? No. I looked over. So you're a nerd. Ryder burst out laughing, and Shauna made a face. I mean, I guess so. It's really mainly a charter school. Shauna jumped in, looking a little pink. There's just an accelerated program and some fancy classes you can take. It's not, but you don't have to take a bunch of tests to be qualified as a consideration. Mom persisted. And it's so competitive and hard to get in and, well... They usually let people like her in to the school to help them seem more diverse. Dad, of course, piped up. It felt like I took a full tackle on the field, the way my stomach flipped. There was a stale silence in the kitchen before I had to ask, Are you kidding me? He looked up from his plate, blinking, mouth half full. What? Obviously... Shauna deserves to be in that school, and not because she uses a wheelchair, but because she's brilliant enough to be there. You think some fancy school is going to let anyone in so that they can claim their good deed of the day? What the heck? Look, I'm not saying that she's not smart. You're acting like you think that being in a chair affects her ability to be a normal human being. It literally changes nothing about her other than the fact that she moves around differently and has to deal with stupid comments from people like you. My words hung heavy in the air. No one daring to take a breath, my father stared back at me, with eyes that looked far too much like mine. I easily held eye contact, driven by my anger pulsing through my veins. This had been an important evening for me, and he had to ruin it with his unchecked bias. If he wasn't my own father, I would have slugged him by now. Even Will, of all people, had treated Shauna with more respect. Without another word, he got up and left the room. My mom tried to stop him, but he had stormed off without so much as a glance her way. Good riddance. I muttered under my breath as I stuffed another bite into my mouth. Mark. My mom sighed, but she never said anything else. Just shifted into silence like she always did. I wasn't a marriage expert. I had never been in a serious relationship before, but I knew that agreeing with everything your partner did couldn't be the solution to your relationship issues. Maybe it led to less arguing, but that was really all there was to a healthy marriage. Shauna and I argued all the time, mostly about unimportant things, but we were still friends. I'd hoped that those 
love the experts had changed things, but maybe some things couldn't be fixed. Once I'd managed to calm myself down, I was able to look over at Shauna. She was already looking back, and on expression on her face, she was probably mad. I wouldn't blame her if she wanted to leave. Man, I wanted to hit something. Someone. How could anyone dare to make her feel bad about herself? She was... Smiling. She was smiling. My shoulders slumped and I let out a long, long breath. Glad that she wasn't too upset. I watched her face a little longer, trying to spot some sign that she, she was just hiding her hurt. But I just saw Shauna. I slowly smiled back, feeling my heart give another hard thump as her eyes met. It was hard to believe that she was friends with someone like me. I felt like I was breaking some sort of rule to have a friend so kind and smart and pretty. Universe, what the heck? Do you want to play Call of Duty? After supper? Call it, Ryder asked suddenly, drawing our attention to him. His bright eyes and innocence immediately released the remaining tension from the room. Even my mom had to chuckle at his enthusiasm. Um, yes, of course, Shana answered, then... Rainer a big grin. I have absolutely no idea how to play, but I'm in. It's so easy. I'll pick the best map and show you which gun to use, and he excitedly went on on a long tangent about all the ins and outs of the game, using terms that probably went in one ear and out the other, but Shana bobbed her head at all the right times and looked surprised and interesting, even though she probably wasn't. And I don't know if it's possible for me to have liked her more in that moment. It was like she just fit. As though she was always meant to have a seat at our kitchen table, as if the walls of our home had been waiting to invite her in. I don't know what my future was going to look like. If you asked me two months ago, I would have told you that I didn't even think I had a future. I didn't imagine it, I could last this long. But I found myself, for the first time in a long time, thinking about what my future would look like. Hoping. What would I do when I finished school? Where would I live? What would I accomplish? But more importantly, who would be there? Ryder giggling as Shauna's eyes grew wide when he told her about the game, and she turned to look at me, all bright eyes. This game sounds intense. You'll die a lot. I shrugged. But it's fun. She sighed playfully and nodded. You're going to help me though, right? You've got my back? I smiled, nodding and nudging her hand with mine. Yeah, Shana. I've always got your back. Chapter 12 As time passed, things began to change between Shana and I. We grew closer, but it started to feel different. There was more... something in the air. A sense of anticipation, like someone was always waiting for the other person to do something, but neither of us knew what. Or maybe I was overthinking the situation because I was starting to realize that I might be developing feelings towards her, like the romantic kind. There would be these moments where I would catch myself watching her too long to be casual. I don't know if she ever noticed, but never did anything or said anything, or at times I would almost reach out to grab onto her hand or poke her cheeks or do something to just touch her because my hands couldn't figure out what else to do in that moment, but I never let myself. Instead, I stayed quiet, letting the feelings grow but keeping them contained. Triple locked. I refused to release them. If I somehow ruin the best friendship I've ever had with these stupid feelings, I don't think I could ever forgive myself. And I know that one person could never be the solution to all your problems. I didn't expect that from Shauna, and I would never put that kind of responsibility or burden on her shoulders. Right now, her and Ryder were all I had. As cheesy as that was, saying they were... The lights in my otherwise dark life, my little brother and my best friend, I wasn't going to mess it up. Not again. We're doing something tonight, Tana, Shana informed me the second I answered the phone. Sorry, I think you have the wrong number. 
I fell back on my bed, staring at the blank ceiling. Ha ha, good one, Marky boy. Very creative, very funny. Can't you hear how hard I'm laughing? Okay, okay, I sighed, rolling my eyes. I'm sorry. You should be. There's a lot of people out there who put a whole lot of work into their comedic genius. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but my hilariousness just didn't just appear. I mean, yeah, okay, most of it is natural. I'd take a guess to say that I am 90% funny all on my own, but the other 10% is thanks to the hustle I put in coming up with good jokes. It's actually insulting that people like you show your board. Oh my goodness, she groaned. So freaking bored. Help me. I chuckled. She's so dramatic, but anything sounded more appealing than the math homework I was putting off. So I was in. All right, what are we doing? I don't know. I actually don't have anything planned. I just wanted to hang out with you. I smiled. Oh. Yeah. Sitting up, I glanced around the room for some spark of inspiration. We could just do what we usually did, watch a movie or go shoot hoops somewhere, but I wanted to change it up, surprise her. For a moment, my eyes landed on a digital camera sitting on my desk that I had been using to help my mom upload some photos from their couple's retreat onto her Facebook page for all her friends to see. It was almost like a band-aid, like having a couple pictures of the two of them smiling at each other would cover everything else up. But really, all you had to do was peel back the thin layer to find the festering wound beneath it. But I guess it was kind of nice. The pictures were good keepsakes, something they could hold on to and remember how they felt in that moment. Remember how much they enjoyed being with each other, even things went back to not being easy, even if things changed one day. I swallowed. I have an idea. Cool, what is it? A surprise. Wear something nice and I'll be there in a few minutes. Wait, what? Mark, I... I hung up the phone with a grin, already coming up with a plan. This would be fun. Quickly, I changed into a pair of jeans and a dress shirt I wore on game days. I grabbed my keys and camera on the way out. I parked my truck in front of Shauna's house and knocked on the door before letting myself in. After hanging out at the Reed household quite a few times in the last month, they insisted that I stop waiting for them to come answer the door because they had better things to do. They put a lot of effort into making sure I felt comfortable and at home there, and I really appreciate that about them. Shana's family was awesome. Her parents were caring and funny and made some of the best food, and her siblings were sassy and goofy and loud in the best possible ways. The more time I spent there with them, the more I learned about them, and the more I understood how Shana became the person she was. Shana had only ever been to my house once, after that stupid meal with my parents a month ago, and that had only been when my dad wasn't home. There wasn't a chance I was putting her through that again. Hey, Mark, Evan greeted, coming to see who was barging into their home. How's it going, man? I smiled, bumping my fist against his. Have you been working on your shots? Every day, he beamed proudly, reaching into the closet by the doorway and shoving a few things around until he pulled out his new hockey stick he had gotten for the upcoming season. I took it in my hands and examined it, letting out a low whistle. Nice, with the curve on it. Before he could answer, Shauna came zooming down the hallway, a fierceness in her eyes. Mark! Evan slowly took the stick out of his hands. Somebody's in trouble, he sang smugly. I elbowed him in the side before taking a few cautious steps forward. Um, yes. You can't do that, she said, crossing her arms. I glanced over my shoulder. Talk to your brother? No, you can't just tell me to wear something nice and hang up on me and then refuse to answer when I call back. Oh boy, I'm out of here. Evan grimaced before laughing, inching out of the entryway. Good luck, ma'am. I watched him disappear around the corner before turning back to his angry-eyed sister. I'm sorry? You will be. She spun her chair around and rolled back down the hallway towards her room. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to follow her or not, so I took a few tiny steps after her. How am I supposed to look nice on such short notice? A voice was huffing from her room. 
I peeked around the corner to see her, her shoveling through the clothes in her drawers. I don't even have anything nice to wear. Well, that's a lie, I thought, remembering the outfit she'd worn to meet my parents. I cleared my throat. That green dress, green dress you've got looks pretty. A uh, decent. It, um, makes you look good. Shauna turned herself towards me, raising an intimidating eyebrow. Not that you don't usually look good, I added quickly, because you do, um, usually. It's just a, it's a nice one. Shauna thankfully smiled and felt it was safe to step into the room now. Thanks, Mark, but I can't wear that again. I think you could. That's because you're a boy. I raised my hands in defeat and tilted my head towards her closet. All her skirts and dresses were organized on the right side of the closet. I spotted a piece of long red fabric that had sparkly tint to it. I pointed towards it. How about that? Hmm. She frowned, turning. That red thing is nice. You could wear that. She pursed her lips for a moment. Okay. Oh, actually? Yep, now get out. I'm changing. A little whiplash, I hurried out of her room and pulled the door shut behind me. After a moment, I had to shut the smile. Shauna always kept me on my toes, that was for sure. Fifteen minutes later, we were driving down the road in silence. I wasn't exactly sure where I was taking us, but it was kind of hard to think properly with Shauna sitting next to me looking like that. Neither of us had anything to say since I had helped her into my truck. I drove, trying to focus on staying in my lane. She waited in a passenger seat, fiddling with her hands. My pointer finger tapped relentlessly against the top of the steering wheel. I bet you look great at Christmas. Shauna made a small coughing noise and turned at me with an odd expression. What? I just mean you look really good in red and green. Silence hung between us and I forced myself to keep my eyes forward. Oh, uh, thank you. Shauna answered, quickly turning her head towards the window. I held back a groan. She was probably laughing at me. I risked a peek out of the corner of my eye, only seeing the back of her head. But also the slight shake of her shoulders, definitely laughing. I bet you look great at Christmas. <laughs> really, Mark? Oh, look, we're here, I announced loudly, pulling over to the curb, the air in the truck suddenly suffocating. In record time, I undid my seatbelt and stepped out into the cool evening air, taking a few deep breaths before I grabbed Shauna's chair for her. Okay, man, chill. Shauna laughed at you a thousands of times. You need to get a hold of yourself. Thankfully, she was done giggling by the time I opened the door. She just smiled at me as I helped her into her chair. She didn't even tease me for my comment, which was suspicious. I motioned for her to follow me and... We went a little ways down the sidewalk before crossing the streets towards a little shop with a wooden sign in front of it. It's closed, Shana pointed out once we got close enough to read the sign. I know. I positioned her chair in front of the building and then turned her to face me. What are we doing here? She asked curiously. Well, this isn't just any ordinary coffee shop, I explained. A few years ago, like maybe ten, they filmed almost... They filmed some part of a movie here, and people always take pictures in front of it. I never have, so I thought we could get one together. You made me do my hair so that we could take a selfie with an old building? No. I flicked her on the nose. I thought we could be someone else for a night. Anyone we want. Tourists. Explore the town like we've never seen it before. Her eyes lit up at the idea, but then she frowned playfully. You think if I got to be anyone I wanted to be, I'd choose to be a tourist in this dumpy town? Tonight you would. Her eyes met mine, and we smiled. Suddenly, shooting her hand out, she stopped a random lady passing by the sidewalk, suddenly developing her posh accent again. Excuse me, ma'am. Would you be willing to take a picture of us, please? We came all the way across the pond to see this place. It would mean the world to us. Not about to an attempt an accent, I pulled the camera out of my pocket and held it up silently. The woman looked a little confused, but agreed, taking the camera I offered. I stepped back next to Shauna, draping an arm over her shoulder and crouching down next to her. You don't have to, 
she muttered. You can stand. Smile, I reminded her, sending the camera a big grin, just as the shutters clicked. I wasn't normally a smile-with-your-teeth kind of guy, but I like... I said we could be anyone tonight. Just lovely. Thank you so much. Shauna gushed to the lady as she handed the camera back. Cheers. I nodded, then Shauna turned on to the next one. And that's how we spent our night. We drove all around town to different places of relevance to our, and got strangers to take photos of us. Shauna usually chose a new accent every time, each one more awful than the last, and we'd come up with some ridiculous backstory for who we were and why we were there. I doubt anyone believed us, but it had us cracking up. Some pictures were nice. We were stood side by side and smiled politely. Others were goofy, where we'd stick out our tongues, or I'd sit on Chana's lap, or other things we thought would be funny. We talked and laughed the whole time and saw more of the town that night than I'd ever seen. Or maybe it all just felt different when I was with her. As always, with Shauna, time flew by. And the light started to fade as the day came to an end. Shauna was getting tired, and I knew I would need to get her home soon. But there was one more photo I wanted. I drove us to our park, and we wound through the pathways, admiring the little green patterns that lit the area until we reached the familiar spot. Here. I grabbed the handles and pulled her to a stop. Why here? She asked. But then, with a small gasp, she realized, this is where I ran you over. I glanced around and gave the chair a slight push forward for exactness. The very spot. Ah, oh, yes, we have to get a picture here. For what felt like the hundredth time that night, I crouched down beside Shauna and held the camera out in front of us. This time, there was no silly accents or stranger to be a part of the moment. It would be just us. But first, I needed to say something. A couple months ago, we were here in this same spot, but in different places. I said quietly. I was in a really dark place. I was angry, I thought the universe was against me, and that was never going to get better. That day we met, I actually, I was planning to, I sucked in a breath, unable to get the words out. Shana understood and wrapped her fingers around my wrist, looking up at me with watery eyes. I thought there was something heavy about you that day. Things were bad. I choked out a small laugh. You were insane, doing tricks in a wheelchair at the top of a steep hill. Really? I like to live up to you, she joked half-heartedly. But you do, I nodded. You really do, and you brought this brightness into my life. and made me feel like I actually wanted to live it. She dropped her gaze down to my lap, hiding her blue eyes behind her lashes. She was so beautiful. Seriously, Shauna, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. You're the best friend I've ever had, and I'm so glad you saved my life by nearly killing me that day. She let out a watery laugh, shaking her head. I reached over, tilting her face towards me so that I could look into those eyes that have seen right through me since the day one. Thank you, I said quietly. Shauna closed her eyes tightly. You're my best friend, too. I swallowed hard, letting out another slow breath, resting in the moment a little longer. There was something about it that told me this moment didn't require any words, didn't require anything else but the two of us, knowing how much we meant to each other. She took the camera from me and held it out in front of us, her hand trembling slightly. She looked over to me if she was me. I looked over to her to see if she was making a goofy face, but she wasn't. 
She was beaming at the camera. So stinking pretty that I couldn't help myself. I leaned over and carefully kissed her cheek as the camera clicked. In quiet contentment, we drove back to her house and I walked her to a door. But as soon as I saw the front door steps, I realized I wasn't ready to say goodbye quite yet. So I sat myself down on the step of the porch next to her. Feeling like nothing could stop me, I reached over and took her hand, gently holding it in mine. I liked the feeling of her hand. It was so soft and small and fit nicely into my own. I looked over at Chana, who was still staring straight ahead. It was actually pretty odd that she hasn't said anything this whole time. In fact, I would hazard a guess that she had never gone this long without talking in her entire life. I looked closer. Are you blushing? She jumped at the sound. Huh? No. Really? I grinned. Because from this angle, it looks like you're blushing. I think you might need to get your eyes checked. Maybe. Or maybe you're embarrassed. I smiled and gave her hand a squeeze. She laughed, but wouldn't look at me. Um, no. Whatever you say. Suddenly, she turned to face me. Can I ask you something? Anything. Were those real tourist attractions you took me to tonight? I bite my lip to keep from smiling. I knew it! She cried, raising her free hand to punch the bridge of her no- to pinch the bridge of her nose. I knew they wouldn't have filled the movie in this stupid little shop. Well, they could have. And that oak tree that that lady's house was a bit of a stretch. It's an old tree, but it's not the oldest in the state. It might be. And why would John Stamos be all the way here to paint a crosswalk for our post office? I chuckled. Okay, but you believe me. I didn't. I... Well, I... She made a face. I trusted you. Your first mistake. Really, but a guy's got to do what a guy's got to do. What do you mean? What were you even getting out of that? Well, I smiled. I did get some pictures with a pretty girl. I, her realization died in her throat as she leaned back in her seat. You're a butt. I am a nice butt. No. Don't you want to touch my butt, Shana? Mark! You're the one who has an obsession with butts. Shh! She glanced around. Oh my gosh, my family will hear you. What, you don't want them to know? The first step in admitting you have a problem. I'm leaving, she sighed, yanking her hand from mine and turning towards the door. I smiled, sending her a stupid grin. Good night, Shana. She tucked her hair behind her ear and smiled back. Good night, Mark. All right, everyone, that's the end of today's episode. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. And in the next one, you will get to see what happens next. I hope that you guys are just as excited as I am. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Goodbye, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, friends.